Hello, in this video, we're gonna be going through lesson 9.5, day two on completing the square. This builds off of what we did in lesson 9.5, day one. So if you haven't completed that lesson, please go back and do 9.5, day one first. The essential question that we'll continue to answer is how do you solve a quadratic equation by completing the square? Now that we know the basics of how to complete the square, let's look at how we can use completing the square to solve a quadratic equation. The first step of the process is to get the left side of the equation in the form x squared plus bx, and you wanna keep the x squared term positive. So if we go over here to our um, equation, we wanna just get rid of that minus eight and move it to the other side. So I'm gonna add eight on each side, and that gets us down to x squared plus six x equals eight. Now for step two, we wanna complete the square by adding b over two squared to both sides. It's really important that you remember to add it to both sides. So the trick that I like to use and that I've seen work well for students in the past is just draw yourself a blank out like this because whatever we add to the left side to complete the square, we have to add that to the right side as well to keep the equation balanced. That number right there is gonna be the b over two. In this equation, b is six. So b over two squared becomes six divided by two squared, which is three squared, and three squared is nine. So we're gonna add nine on each side. And now that changes our quadratic equation to x squared plus six x plus nine equals 17. Well, now we're ready to factor the left side of the equation into the square of a binomial. And remember that square is just x plus b over two quantity squared. So here that's x plus six over two, so x plus three quantity squared equals 17. And now that we have it as a binomial squared, we can undo the squared by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. And don't forget the plus or minus. When we solve with square roots, we have to remember that plus or minus to get both of the answers. So square root this side, square root the right side as well, put the plus or minus in front of your radical. And now we have x plus three equals plus or minus the square root of 17. Remember the square and the square root cancel each other out. That's why it's just x plus three now. And at this stage two, we should also check to see if the radical can be simplified. This radical square root of 17 cannot be simplified, so we don't have anything to simplify here. So let's go right on to step number five. Get the x by itself and write your final answer. Right now it's x plus three, so to get rid of that plus three, we just need to subtract three on each side. And you wanna make sure you keep that plus or minus in front of the square root of 17. So when you write your final answer, you'll write it as x equals negative three plus or minus the square root of 17. It'll take a few problems to get the hang of this. So just kind of be patient with yourself. I know completing the square is a little tricky at first. Look at those five steps that you wrote down and filled in and use them to help you with the process. The first step is just to get the x squared plus bx term alone. So you wanna move the constant plus 16 here to the other side. So let's begin by subtracting 16 on each side. And that gets us down to x squared minus 14x plus something equals negative 16 plus something. And you're gonna add those blanks so you remember that whatever we add to the left side to make the perfect square, we have to add the same thing to the right side. All right, now that number there is gonna be the b divided by two squared. Here, the b is negative 14. So we have negative 14 divided by two squared, which is negative seven squared, and negative seven squared is 49. That means we need to add 49 on each side. Now this side is gonna factor to a perfect square. X plus B over two squared. Remember the B over two was just 
negative 14 over 2, which is negative 7. So our factored form is x minus 7 squared, and that's equal to negative 16 plus 49 is 33. Now let's get rid of the squared by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Don't forget the plus or minus in front of the square root of your number. That'll then get us down to x minus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 33. You'll want to check to see if the radical can be simplified. Square root of 33, if you try to make your factor tree for it, the only numbers that multiply to 33 are 3 times 11. Um, but that's not a pair. There's no perfect squares that go into root 33, so it's already simplified. That means we just have one step left to get the x by itself. We have to add 7 on each side to give us a final answer of x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 33. Here's one more problem just like that. Uh, let's solve it by completing the square, and the first step is to get the x squared plus bx term alone. So we want to move that plus 1 to the other side of the equation. We can do that by subtracting 1. Now, x squared plus 10x plus something has to equal negative 1 plus something. And to find that number there, we can complete the square by taking the b term, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. So 10 divided by 2 squared makes 5 squared, which is 25. So let's add 25 on each side here. And now the left side can be factored into the square of a binomial. This is going to factor to x plus b over 2 squared. And the b over 2 was 5. So we have x plus 5 squared equals, and then negative 1 plus 25 is 24. Now we're ready to undo the squared by taking a square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus in front of the square root of the number. That gets us down to x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 24. Let's reduce that radical. Square root of 24 is reducible. You can reduce it either using a factor tree or the perfect squares method. I'm going to do the factor tree method. So for 24, we can break that down to 4 times 6. 4 can be broken down to 2 times 2. 6 can be broken down to 2 times 3. And then I circled the pair of 2s, and I'm putting boxes around the 2 and the 3. The numbers that can't be paired get boxed up. And then our pair goes out, and the boxes stay under the radical. So this makes, whoops, 2 times 3 in the box. So this makes 2 root 6. So we have x plus 5 equals plus or minus 2 root 6. Now we're one step away for step 5. We just need to get the x by itself and write our final answer. So to do that, we want to subtract 5 on each side. And that gets us down to x equals negative 5 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6. And remember, 2 radical 6, that's just the simplified form of the square root of 24. If your radical can be reduced, you want to reduce it either by making a factor tree like I did here or by using the perfect squares method. I'll show one later with the perfect squares method. Here's a try now problem for you to try on your own. It's just like example three that we completed. So go ahead and pause the video right now and give this problem a try. Then when you hit play again, I will have the solution posted. Please pause the video now. Here is your solution. You should have ended up with the final answer of x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 13. You can look at the work steps here, pause the video if you need to. For example 4 in our notes, we're still going to be using the same process of completing the square. You'll just notice that these questions require a little bit more rearranging at the beginning in order to complete the square. Remember that the first step of the complete the square process is to get x squared plus bx alone on the left side of the equal sign. 
So with this problem here, we need to move that 14x to the other side. And to do that, we can subtract 14x on each side of the equation. That'll get us down to x squared minus 14x plus 9 equals 0. But now we have to move the 9 to the other side. We want just the x squared minus 14x on the left side of the equation. So to undo that plus 9, we can subtract 9 on each side, getting us down to x squared minus 14x plus blank equals negative 9 plus blank. Now we're ready to complete the square by taking b divided by 2 and squaring it. You can see here that our b value is negative 14. So negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7, and then square that, and we're at positive 49. So add 49 on each side, and that'll get us down to x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals negative 9 plus 49. Now we can factor the left side into the square of a binomial. This is x plus b over 2, which is negative 7. So x minus 7, quantity squared, equals 40. Now let's get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Don't forget your plus or minus in front of the square root of the number. x minus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 40. Now square root of 40 can be reduced here. I'm going to use the perfect squares method on this one. We want to find the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 40. You have a list of perfect squares from lesson 9.3. We want to look at all the perfect squares that are below 40. So that would include 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. In that list there, the largest number that divides evenly into 40 is 4. So let's rewrite the square root of 40 as plus or minus the square root of 4 times 10. And then since 4 is a perfect square, we can take out that perfect square, split it apart like this, and we get plus or minus 2 root 10. So a square root of 40 is the same as 2 root 10. So I'm going to replace that plus or minus square root of 40 with plus or minus 2 root 10. And now we're one step away from our answer. The last step is just to get the x by itself. So let's move that minus 7 to the other side. We can undo a minus 7 by adding 7 on each side, giving us a final answer of x equals 7 plus or minus 2 root 10. Here's one more example, again, that requires us to rearrange things a little bit. We want the x squared and the bx term to be alone on the left side of the equation. So we need to move that negative 6x to the other side, and we can do that by adding 6x on both sides. Now we're down to x squared plus 6x, which is the correct thing. So x squared plus 6x plus blank equals 59 plus blank. And we need to figure out what b divided by 2 squared is. Now the b term is the b after you've gotten the x squared plus bx term alone. So b here is a 6, and 6 divided by 2, when we square that, would be 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9. So we need to add 9 on each side there. And now the left side is going to factor to x plus 3 squared. Remember that 3 is just the b over 2 before we squared it. 59 plus 9 is 68. And now we're ready to undo the square by taking a square root of each side. Don't forget your plus or minus symbol. That gets us down to x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 68. For square root of 68, you can simplify that most likely here. I'm going to make a tree for 68. I know that uh, 2 goes into 68 34 times. And 34 is 2 times 17. So there's a pair of 2's right here. 
The 17 can't be broken down any further, so that gets a square around it. And we can rewrite that then as plus or minus 2 root 17. So our x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 2 root 17. And now we are one step away from our answer. Just subtract 3 on each side to get the x alone. And that gives us a final answer of x equals negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 17. Here's one last try now problem for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Please pause the video. All right, here is your final solution. You should have x equals five plus or minus the square root of seven. You can see all my work steps here. This concludes lesson 9.5 day two on completing the square. Thanks for watching and good luck as you practice some problems on your own. Bye.